So this is lecture three on phase transformation. So with this lecture, we're going to talk about one, the phase with compounds and also how to find a three reaction. And also we'll do example on the level group. Yes, let's get going. So this is a course that is taken under the Department of Material Science Engineering. And uh, I'm Stephen Nomad, the original content creator of this. And this is lecture three. So now we're going to talk about phase diagram with compound. So some of the phase diagrams have a compound in it. And this compound can be stoichiometric or non-stoichiometric. Now, when you talk about stoichiometric, how will you understand stoichiometric and non-stoichiometric? So let's get something. Sometimes a crystal compound called intermetallic compound may form between two metals, yes. And these intermetallic compounds might be a stoichiometric compound or non-stoichiometric compound. Such compounds generally have a distinct chemical formula or stoichiometry, yes. Such compounds generally have a distinct chemical formula or what? Stoichiometric. Now here is non-stoichiometric. So this side, non-stoichiometry. This is non. So it's non-stoichiometry. Yeah, let's continue. So we are going to take this diagram. So this is a diagram that is um, magnesium and lead phase diagram. And we are going to identify the uh, the metallic compound, the intermetallic compound. So now, as I told you about, we have the stoichiometric comp uh, intermetallic compound and the non-stoichiometric intermetallic compound. What are the difference? Now, when we talk about the stoichiometric compound, you see this, it is not in a range, so it's just a line showing on the phase diagram. But with the non-stoichiometric, it comes in a range. So that's the difference. With the stoichiometric, there's it's not range, it's fixed, it has a fixed composition. But with the non stoichiometric it has um, the, the composition, they are between. So the composition is in between certain numbers or certain weight percentage. Do you understand? Yes. So, and with the labeling of the phase diagram, first here we have liquid here. So, and we have alpha here. So, what to be here? It will be liquid plus alpha. And here, this metal is what? The magnesium lead. So that means that to find the reaction here or to find the labeling here, that will be liquid plus what? This stoichiometric intermetallic compound. And this is a compound. So that means that when labeling here too, it will be the liquid plus what? The compound. And here is beta. That means that here will be what? Liquid plus what? Beta. As simple as that. So note the stoichiometric compounds and non-stoichiometric compounds very well. Let's get going. We are still on the phase diagram with compounds. So we have some properties on this intermetallic compound. So let's read. Intermetallic compounds such as, such as uh, titanium, aluminum, and nickel aluminum have an ordered crystal structure where T, I, and A, L atoms occupy a specific location in the crystal rather than the random location as in the modes of solid solution. So these are some properties you need to know about the intermetallic compounds. So you can read this and just, it's just the properties and the applications. So now I talked about, you're going to take an example with, with level rule. So I, I with lecture uh, two, we talk about the level rule. So here we are going to understand how we can use the level rule very well with this example. So now, the set point C has a composition of 48% of what? Le tin alloy at 150 centigrade. So now we have a diagram given to us. So this is the phase diagram of lead tin. And we are asked to... Um, locate a point at C. So we locate a point and make it C with 40% weight. That's 40 weight percent of what? Thin. Now, the most serious thing I will tell you whenever they give you a phase diagram is for you to know 
the description of the phase diagram. Here they say weight percent 10. So that means that 20 here represents 20 weight percent 10. That means that here we have 80% of what? Lead. 40% here means that 40 weight percent of 10. That means that we have 60 weight percent of what? Lead. You should note that. So always this, take this into consideration and note that. So now here, they said what? 40 weight percent of what? 10 alloy at what? 150 degrees Celsius. And what are we supposed to find? They said number one, we say what? A, what are the phase present? So we need to indicate, draw a line at 40 weight percent 10 and indicate 150 degrees Celsius. How do you do it? So now, uh, if you can see the yellow line I've done here, that represents the what? The, uh, that is the composition, that is the bulk composition, yes, which is the 40 weight percent of what? 10. Then they gave us the temperature. Note, with the level rule, for you to apply the level rule, for you to find the number of phase, composition, and amount, you need to have these two things. You need to have the bulk composition and also the temperature. That's why they gave you the bulk, what? Composition and the temperature. So now the bulk composition is what? 40 weight percent of what? 10. And we've done that. And it's at a temperature of what? 150 centigrade. Then they're asking, what are the phases present? See here. That means that this is where the thing is hitting. So what are the phases present here? Let's come here. You can see that we have alpha plus what? Beta. So the phases present are alpha and beta. So the answer becomes what? Alpha plus beta. But you can specify the making it. The phases are alpha plus beta or alpha and beta. That's it. As simple as that. So you need to indicate your bulk composition and your temperature to get the what phase present. The next question you're supposed to find is what are the composition of the phase present? So we have the phases which is alpha plus beta. Then what are the composition? When we talk about the composition, the composition is down here. It is in weight percentage. So now when you look at this, this is weight percent of 10. So that means that the composition will be in weight percent of 10. Yes. So now let's look at something. For us to find the composition of um, the phase we've, we've drawn here first. Now, after drawing the temperature, right, it hits some of the faces. Now, let me label this face for you. Let, let me show you or make let me brief you on this. Now, you know this is a liquid phase. Then when it comes here, this is the liquidus line. And we get what alpha plus liquid because this side is what alpha that means that with this side we have the interaction between alpha and liquid so here will be what alpha and liquid and this side is beta this side is beta and this is liquid that means that with here the interaction will be liquid plus beta and at the end we are going to have alpha plus what beta this is a eutectic reaction you understand the eutectic reaction soon. So when a liquid, when you cool a liquid and give you two solids, it's called eutectic reaction. Then we know that the phase we had here was alpha plus beta. Then finding that what composition, we then you see this temperature. When it hits the solvers line, or when it hits this line, it means that place. That's where the uh, alpha starts to work and its formation so you indicate that place so for you to know the composition of the alpha then you draw you see this line when it hits here then you trace it toward here that means that the composition of alpha becomes what 11 weight percent of what 10 so it can be 11 weight percent of 10 or 8 9 weight percent of lead so you, if you are using one compound if you are using one alloy, you can use only one alloy. So if you are using tin, you use tin throughout. If you are using lead, you use lead throughout. So with this, I'm using tin throughout. So that means that here, the composition of alpha becomes what? 11 weight percent of what? Tin. Then the same thing applies here. Where the temperature hits here, this is the beta phase. That means that with this phase, we have, when you trace it down, we get what? The composition for the beta phase. Therefore, the composition for the beta phase will be 97 weight percent of what? 10. 
that is how we do things. So you need to have the temperature and the what the bulk composition for you to know the number of phases and also the composition of each phase. Now let's go to the other one whereby we are going to apply the level group. That's the mass fraction. Wherever they ask you to find a mass fraction, and when they give you the composition and the temperature and it falls between two phases, then you are going to apply mass fraction whereby you apply the level rule. But if it's a single phase, then the mass fraction becomes one in percentage becomes hundred. Yeah. And if it's the phase be the phase become only one. Because if maybe the temperature was supposed to be 300 centigrade, that means here yeah, it's a liquid phase and the mass fraction of liquid phase is 100% or, or 1. So with this, I with my with lecture 2, I taught you how to use the level rule. So I'm going to apply the level rule here. This is the bulk composition, C0. This is composition of alpha. And this becomes the composition of what? Beta. So let's do something here. So now with a formula that for you to find the mass fraction. Now for mass fraction of alpha, we look towards the side. We look at the opposite end. That means that you're going to get C what C beta minus what C not all over what C beta minus what C alpha with the level root. So for you to find the mass fraction of B, that's the beta, you're, you're also going to look at the opposite side. Right, that means we're going to get C naught minus C alpha all over what C beta minus what C alpha. This is the formula, that's the level rule. So, this it's very simple. We can find one, then you subtract it from one in terms of percentage, then you subtract from 100%. So, let's see. So, for us to find the mass fraction of alpha in alpha plus beta, then we know that CB we found CB. From this formula, we know that CB here is what 97 minus the ball composition, which is 40, all over 97 minus what 11. So when you do that correctly, you're going to have the mass fraction to be 0 0.662. Now, in terms of percentage, you multiply it by 100. That means you're going to get 66.2. So we have to, we can express this in percentage or as a fraction. So let's go here. With this, I can decide to subtract this from 1. Or in terms of percentage, you subtract from 100. So you multiply this by 100 and subtract from 100. So with this, we know that for here, we're going to use as a discipline. So 40, that is the C naught, that's the bulk composition, minus C alpha, which is 11, all over C beta, which is 97, minus 1, the 11. So when you do that correct, you're going to get 0 0.338. The, the secret about this is that. When you are done solving this, when you add the two uh, fractions, in terms of percentage, you should get 100%. And in terms of fraction, you should get 1. You should know that. So this is how we apply the level rule. So now we are going to look at the next topic, which is phase diagrams containing three phase reactions. So we are going to learn how to uh, come out with the, um, the three phase reaction, which is eutectic, peritectic, monotectic. You take toilet, but we take toilet, you take uh, and rest. So from this, you're going to understand how to do that. So there are rules that you need to follow. So now let's look at something. In more complex binary phase diagram, the type of metal uh, melting is sometimes used to describe the type of intermediate that occur okay, along with a particular type of solid state reaction. Congruently, melting compounds are those that maintain their specific composition right up to the melting point. This appears to be what localized to. In the liquidus region, that's the liquidus we add, that's where liquid starts from of the phase diagram. In congruent melting compounds, they do not occur directly from the liquidus. So example of congruent melting compounds can be detected. It the exhibits detected reactions. Now the five most important three phase reactions that occur in phase diagram are so we have one which is a eutectic. When we talk about eutectic, a liquid transforming into two new solids on cooling. Please pay attention to this on cooling. A eutectic, a liquid plus solid transform into a new solid on cooling. 
So all these are on cooling. A liquid transformed into a new solid and a liquid. That is monotectic. So the mono, wherever you hear toy, toy, toy is for a solid transforming into something on cooling. And tech is a liquid transforming into something. So if you know, you take tech is a liquid that is transforming into two solids on cooling. Then we take tech a liquid plus a solid transforming into a new solid. Monotectic is a liquid transforming into two new, that's into a new liquid and a solid. Eutectoid, it's a solid transforming into two new solids. Peritectoid, a solid transformed into what? So two solid transforms into a new solid. So we can also have monotectoid. Monotectoid means that a solid that is transforming into two, into a new solid and what? A liquid. So these are the five most important. So now, in case that they give you a phase diagram, how are you going to um, indicate or find out this reaction? So they are, I'm going to teach you how you can do that when the phase diagram is given to you. So there are some rules. These are the diagrams that represent the eutectic. This is the liquid on cooling, giving you two solids. A solid plus liquid giving you a solid that is peritectic. When you take a liquid on cooling, giving you a liquid plus a solid. Check toy, a solid on cooling, giving you two solid. And peritect toy, two solids on cooling, giving you another solid. So these are the diagrams you can react. So most of the times, but the important thing is that you don't need to keep the diagram in your head. From what I'm going to teach you now, when you understand what I'm going to teach you now, you'll be able to predict and find out all reactions in any phase that have been a binary, unary, or ternary. So now we have rules, as I talk about. So these rules will help you find the three phase reactions. So now let's look at something. First rule, locate a horizontal line. That is the ISO thing. Let me teach you something. Maybe Now we call this, we call this line the ISO thing. This is isotherm. It can be peritectic isotherm, eutectic isotherm. So with this, since it's a eutectic reaction, it becomes what? Eutectic isotherm. That's what they're trying to tell you. So now locate a horizontal line isotherm on the phase diagram. The horizontal line, which indicates the presence of three phase reactions, represents the temperature at which the reactions occur under equilibrium condition. Locate three distinct points on the horizontal line, the two ends point plus a third point, often near a center of horizontal line. The center point represents the composition at which the three phase reaction occur. Write a reaction form above the center point, transforming into phase below the point. In most cases, the reaction will be eutectic, eutectoid, or peritectic. That is in most cases. But sometimes you can get what? Monotectic and monotectoid. So now we have a diagram here. So we are going to use this is ion carbide. This diagram, you need to learn how to draw it. In, in the next video that we'll be doing, I'll teach you how to draw this. This is ion carbide. So <laughs> during my time, I, I learned it. I, I learned how to draw this right after I even close my eyes and draw this. Now, so we are supposed to determine the Reaction. So first, we're going to use the delta I. So now look at it. They say first, indicate horizontal isotherm. So this is the isotherm. And this is the temperature. We indicate the temperature. And they say 3.123. Then when writing the reaction, we start from the top. We are starting from the top. Then it should be equal to what is the, the, uh, at the down. But not this side. Though. But what is between the isotherm. This is the Composition of the isotherm to so the middle, what is formed. So now I think that the first one that we get means that you're going to have delta plus liquid giving you gamma, which means delta ion plus liquid giving you what? Austenite. And that is it. So that re reaction becomes what? A peritectic reaction. Very simple as that. So you must indicate, find it, you indicate the temperature, find the isotherm, indicate the redox. And then your reaction, you start from the top, the top should be equal to the down. Let's look at something. The next one we're going to look at 
is L1. So this is L1, right? There's a liquid here. Now, we've indicated this three. So we have the isotherm and we have three dots. One, two, three. Then let's try to name it. So we have a liquid transforming to what? Gamma and liquid two. So we have a liquid transforming to what? Austenite and liquid two. And that gives you what? A monthetic reaction. You can see from here. A liquid giving you a liquid and what? A solid. It's the same thing here. So that's what? A monothetic reaction. Now let's look at, I want to look at something. Now look at this. Can we find a reaction here? No, because here we don't have any three dots here. That would represent this. So always you must indicate, find the isotherm. Whether the peritectic isotherm or the detectic isotherm. And then find the three dot reaction. That's the three actions. Then indicate the temperature. Then you start from the top. The top should be what the top should be equal to the down. Then you look at how the reaction is and name your reaction. Let's look at the next one. Let's look at the next one. So L2 is here. So now we first indicated that there's another line here that have three reactions. And the reactions are we have three dot one, two, three. It means that it can go on a reaction. That means that the the reaction at the top should be equal to the reaction down here. That means that we have liquid 2 changing to what? Gamma and beta. So that means that liquid 2 changing to gamma and beta. And which reaction is that? When a liquid transforms into two solids, we have what? The eutectic reaction. So that reaction is what? A eutectic reaction. Let's look at that. We have another one which is a eutectic reaction. Where is it? Okay, here. Now we have another three reaction here. There's an isotherm, eutectoid isotherm. It's three here. Then we find out that this gamma is being transformed into what? Alpha plus beta. Alpha plus beta. And what reaction is that? When a solid transforms into two solids, we call it eutectoid reaction. So, well, there might be a lot of reactions on this. But this is what I find, but we can find another one. So, what I urge you is that you just go through it again. And we have a lot of phase diagrams, and you can just try to indicate your reactions. So, I know from this video, you've been able to indicate all reactions on any phase diagram given to you, and also how to apply it for the level rule using a level rule to calculate for the amount, and also when the temperature and the bulk of position is given to you, be able to find the composition and also the phase present. Thank you very much for watching this video on phase transformation. Check the description of the video to get the lecture one, lecture two, and lecture four. Thank you very much.